And we are. I hope we're live. Oh. Yeah, we're live. Oh. Hola, como estas, amigo? Oh, my. JC's getting his groove on already. <laughs> She's in the zone. Get in the zone. Are, are, we, are we live? We're live. We're live. We're ready to go. And look at that. It's team, too. Won't be much tequila on this show, but we welcome Alex and Posey for joining us. But I tell you what, they're with me. I was going to say, don't don't count this guy out right here. <laughs> I know. I know. I will. Oh, man, we got to on deck. The show today. It's going to be fun uh, tonight. We got the wonderful Alice and Posey here, and uh, I'm going to make her mad today. Yeah, yeah that's, that's my goal. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is JP. This is the Bull. This is JC. This is Flash. This is Denny Hendricks. And you are listening to. And you are listening to. And you're listening to. And you're listening to the Run and Gun Podcast. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. So, you know, without further ado, let's jump right into it. It's rivalry. Wait a minute, it's wait rivalry. Wait a minute. Is he asleep? Oh. What is going on here? Is this like a plan? Uh, you got like a planned script going? I mean, what what what, what are we doing here? No, this was I don't know. Nice. Yeah, I'm I was, sorry. That I was not Apparently we're apparently we're boring him already. This is that's what that is. Yeah. You fall asleep no, during the intro. Right, well, I hit the, the oh, Cinco de Mayo tequila, and it it uh it did something to me. I, I thought it'd give me energy for the show, but uh, it just made wow. me want to party. And then that's what happens. That's what happens. That's what happens when you get old, man. It just gets worse with time. Oh, Go ahead and I'm accept it now. Oh, I'm not old yet. You don't do me like this, man. Oh, my goodness. Um, just don't so... rip that shirt. I can't. This is my nice one. So we. We had the NFL draft this past week, and to many surprise, honestly, there were no HBC players that got drafted. Um, my thing is, and I honestly say this: there's a lot of dogs that should have been drafted from these HBCUs. But congrats to all of them; they got picked up as undrafted free agents. I know one in particular, Calvin Ashley, from up there in Tallahassee at FAMU. Got picked up by the Bucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I mean, you know, how do y'all? What's y'all's take on this? I, this this is the thing, and I, I'll I'll preface it with this: this year was anything but ordinary. I, it's hard. There's no film this year, so you can go to a combine, you can work out in front of somebody, and that's great. But those are specific skills. There's nothing like game tape. So yep. for a school like FAMU, for many HBCUs this year, there was no real season. And then their season happened in the spring, which means less time to evaluate these guys versus these power five group of five schools who they were the only schools to have full seasons. And some of them didn't even have full seasons. Some of, some teams had several games canceled like Florida State. Um, so, But they played in the fall. So you have a chance – to play in the fall, you have a guy like Justin Fields who had two pro days. I mean, he took advantage of the time he was given, and then he was given extra time. He, he worked out twice. So these HBCUs, they didn't have a fall season, and some of them didn't play at all. So I think that factored into it 100%. Um, granted, yeah. there's never enough HBCU players that, that are drafted to begin with, so you could you could we could talk about that, but this year I think not having a season or playing in the spring was a direct result of not seeing those guys drafted this year. Yes, yes, Absolutely. JC, I totally agree. Um, 
Uh, it's the lack of film, right? There's not necessarily any show of improvement for any of these players, right? And I believe that the ones who were signed as free agents, they're all opt-outs who decided not to play in spring seasons and, and such, right? So it's a, it's a lot of layoff time. There's no film. There's absolutely nothing going on. And it's already slim. I don't want to say slim. Slim is a very bad word. Uh, with the connotation, but the chance isn't high enough already that you're going to be drafted from an HBCU anyway, uh, due to the perception of the competition that you play in the NFL. Um, so it, it wasn't helping the situation at all, but it it's a weird year, and uh, it's to be expected. I, I believe that next year it'll probably be better. Uh, Most hopefully. Definitely. It ends up like 2019 when I believe the offensive tackle was selected in the first round from an HBCU uh, for the Texans. Yeah, and I, and I think that's something too, but you, and something you can also think of is the direction that HBCU football is going. You have a guy like Deion Sanders, who's a big time NFL guy, obviously, who wants to push HBCU football on the map and he has the platform to do it. I know we were talking about the press conference for the Orange Blossom Classic a little earlier before the show started. And he even said it there. You're putting the players on a stage. They created the Legacy Bowl, which is going, it's basically like the Senior Bowl but it's specifically for HBCU players. It's going to be live on the NFL network. So you're giving, you're giving these guys more opportunities to play and more eyes are on them. The more eyes that are on you, the more you blow up on social media, the more people have a chance to see you and the more chance you have, a, a, the more chances you have to be taken in, in, in the NFL draft. So I think over time, it might not be next year, it might not be within the next three or four years, but I think over time, if we see this trend of guys like Dion putting these guys on a platform with the Legacy Bowl, with it airing on a major network like the NFL Network, you know, they were supposed to have that HBCU combine last year that got canceled because of COVID. If we keep doing things like that, it gives these guys more chances to be seen. And I think over time, you'll see more HBCU players get drafted. Yes. And, you know, to piggyback off of that, that's something that Dion and Will have said to Dave that was very spot on. And I even told someone this, I want to say, after the SWAC championship. And they were just like, you know, what, what needs to happen and like what needs to be done and stuff. I was like, well, first of all, that HBCU combine in the future needs to happen. It needs Absolutely. to actually happen. The second thing is when you have these HBCs on TV, the one thing that is, it's, it's good that, yeah, we're, we're, we're putting the classics on, we're putting the Florida classics always on, Magic City and uh, Bayou classics always on. But that's, to me, that that's good, but that's not enough. And then Thursday night is not enough either. And then <laughs> Saturday tape delay is not enough either. Put these teams on television, because honestly, I'll tell you now, some of these some of these games, some of these HBCU games are better than some of these group of five games that I'm seeing. I'd rather I'd look a lot. Five. Not some, not some, a lot. I'd trust me, I'd much rather watch FAMU play against Southern or against Grambling before I'll sit down and watch North Texas play against a team like I don't know Toledo or something. That's that's just my take of it. It's, it's more fun. We have a knock on the door. Who is it? You, you there? Question, question, question. So why not just start a digital network online for HBCU sports? That way they will be broadcast. You can carry it on Roku, smart TVs, and it costs a lot less than trying to start your own terrestrial network. If it was just stream like that. So you're saying not even pair up with a cable provider, just I mean, stream it on Roku. You could pair it with a cable provider, um, but See, I would. That, that's the problem, though. I would start you off. You have to get them to, but you have to get them to accept it. Exactly. Because right now, Xfinity. But, if you have Xfinity, you can't watch the ACC network, and that's gotcha. a major network. My, but what I'm saying is, if you start out completely digital. People can pick them up, the app on your smart TVs, whether it's Roku or just the standard smart TV um, or a Fire Stick. You can grab that that same app 
you can do it as a subscription if you wish um or you just sell advertisement on it you show that it's viable and then some cable providers might pick it up when they realize hey they're making money without us I could see that happening, but I also think you have to push to have it on actual networks right now. Like Jay Peeps was saying, instead of this North Texas Toledo game, why not put the Orange Blossom Classic on it? You know what I mean? Like put a major game on a major network because peop it's yeah. a good game with with figures that are big figures. It's Dion Sanders. And I know we've talked about this before. Whether whatever Jackson State does next year, Dion Sanders is coaching that team. Take advantage yeah. of it and run with it. Use his name as a platform and capitalize on it. So that way people yeah. maybe are tuning in to watch Jackson State, but they're also tuning in to watch Dion Sanders team. And you don't want to think of Jackson State that way, but a lot of people are thinking of it that way. But capitalize on it. It might not be right. You might not agree with it. But capitalize on it while you have the opportunity and the chance to do so. I had somebody ask me recently, um, when, do you think Deion Sanders would be complaining about HBCU sports being neglected if he wasn't coaching there? And my answer was similar to yours. The good mm. thing is that he's there to bring a light. Of mm -hmm. course, if he was coaching in D1, if he was coaching in the Big Ten, he'd care less about HBCU sports, but now that he's there and he sees it and he understands the treatment of it, that could be a good thing to bring a light to it. So I agree with you. I vote for you That's for president. Good. And the one thing I'm going to hit on <laughs> before, we, before we jump to the NFL here, the one thing I will say is, um, you know, I, God, see, I had it, then I lost it. Oh my gosh. I had it. Then oh, I lost it. No, about it. Come Listen, I'm going to save it for the hot topics. Um, J JC, what were we saying? Well, while he's doing whatever he's doing, if you're watching and you <laughs> feel compelled by anything that we say, don't forget to comment. And also, don't forget yes. to like, share, subscribe, and all those things. Yes. Um, so the NFL that's, draft that's, recap. That's but that's but that's what hold on wait that's what you had to contribute to all that conversation like I appreciate the shares and the likes but that's all you had to contribute. Oh Lord, this is what we it's doing. Like, Let's go. Let's it, go. It has started. It has started. Come it started. On, come on. I was waiting. I was waiting for like a truth bomb from you, JC, and like we got likes and shares. I mean, come on. I want to hear your. Wow. Opinion. I was hitting truth. I was. The time went out. I was about to compare uh, Dion to. Gus Malzahn, but you know, the time went out. I, I gotta respect the time. No, okay. you gotta respect uh, the time. Here's, the, here's something y'all can agree on. Trevor Lawrence went fifth in the draft, of course, but then Zach Wilson went second. So I, I know there, there was something there about y with y'all too about who was gonna go second. Hey, yeah. Zach, Zach went. Zach went second. We knew that was gonna happen. I, I, that was his guy too. You were hyping up Zach Wilson, so for some I mean, reason, let's hear it. Go ahead, I'll give it to you. What? What? For some reason, what? some reason he was hyping him up. Yeah, for some Lord reason. Yeah. Uh uh. He drinks too much. I ain't trying to. I... <laughs> that's 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 why that's why he fell that's why he fell asleep at the beginning of this broadcast. Exactly. Oh, exactly. Uh, Y'all starting, huh? Y'all starting. <laughs> It's all right, but it's you, cool. but you, you make it too easy. You make it way too easy. Way I've told you this easy. before. Zach Wilson, yeah. Zach Wilson <laughs> is a great prospect. Now, while I was arguing for him, I kind of wish he would have slid because dang, to end up on the Jets is almost a death sentence. But <laughs> he got what he deserved. That's crime enough. <laughs> it's crime but enough. I, I will say the Jets did do really good in the draft. I, I really like the move that they did moving back into the first round, picking up uh, Ali uh, Vera Tucker. I, it was it was it was a, a great move in my opinion to try and protect a better move than what the Bengals did with yeah. their first round pick. They probably you know I'm just gonna say they probably should have taken a Sue well. You know? No instead of Jamar Chase. Huh? No. Huh? No. 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 And I was, I was, and I was a former offensive lineman. I'm gonna tell you, Panay Sewell needs more work. He's gonna be like a guy like Tony Mandrich almost. They boost him up, they get you looking, 
but no. without the steroids. Without the steroids. Look at his footwork. Look at his first punch. Look at his follow through. He needs okay. more work. He should have taken another Slayton. year and come back. But you know, that's just my opinion. Slayton, I, 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 you got me there. Regardless, I will say this about the draft. I'll I'll say this about the draft. One, I don't like getting too hyped up over these players because you gotta you gotta we gotta see how they do. The draft is there's some guys you know they're gonna excel, and other times I'm like mm, give them a couple years so we can figure this out. I think the Panthers had a good draft. Yes. They went with their guy Sam Darnold. They built around him, and I think they. Yeah. They, they did good. They're so confident in him. That's why they picked up J.C. Horn. I got to commend them. I think they, 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 we were talking about Sam Darnold just a couple weeks ago when I was on here. We were like, mm, what did they do? Did they do the right thing? They built around him. So mm-hmm. they, I, I think they had a good draft. Whether yeah. you believe in him or not, they built around him and they they went with it and they went with it 100%. I just hope he still believes in himself after being in New York for so long. But just yeah, suck yeah, the what? soul right out of you. Yes. That brings yes. up who I thought had a really good draft, which is kind of a shame to say. But the Jets, I thought they did pretty decently. I believe that they picked up some very good offensive players and were able to help try to put a a nice spark in there, especially picking up Michael Carter out of North Carolina. Uh, That's a lot of help. Like I said, offensive line help and an electric quarterback. Now, will they be able to do the right thing? It's the Jets. I I can't (laughs) tell you anything beyond that. well, that, so you, I mean, you talk about a quarterback, though, too, but he's he's going to be a, a rookie quarterback. So you have to <laughs> yeah. fresh me. about that, too. Uh, fresh me. I ask, will they do the right thing? Will they will they press him in? Will they give him the tools necessary? Will they will they grow him or will they throw him into the flame and then watch the souffle I, fall? I, I honestly feel like he's going to get thrown into the flame. I really feel like he is. They got nobody yeah. else. Exa- yeah, I know. Exactly. Well, that, and that's yeah. and that's the that's the problem too. It's like what JC was saying. It's the Jets. J E T S. Lose, lose, lose. Yay! Thought it was mess, mess, mess. Just not even. Yeah, I was just a mess. Not even nice. Damn, yeah. I mean. Well, um, Justin Fields went second overall to Chicago. I'll be honest. With you. I'm surprised. He's second standing. overall. Second. Oh, I mean, no, like twelve. Well, what draft? What draft are you watching? I know. <laughs> Maybe that's the one that's drinking. That's yeah. Yep. I was, you know what? It's, it's midterms week. I don't need this right now. He went Brent, second overall. Bro, wow. he went twelfth to I Chicago. Mean, yeah. I I mean the the question is why? I mean if you look at and I'm not saying I agree with him or not, but there his. I guess evaluations over the last couple months were less than flattering. So you have to think that that get to some people, what are they seeing that we're not? I mean, that's another thing too. How did he do in those interviews with teams? So that, that's another thing. We don't see everything that goes on. Do I think he has the tools to be a great quarterback? Absolutely. He's shown it. I know there was some, uh, some chatter about him being able to read his offense and stuff and getting kind of past that first read. I don't see an issue with that, but like I said, when he works out and when he interviews for those specific teams, what did they see that we didn't? Because obviously there's something that made that stock fall. And his stock didn't – I mean, he got he got taken 12th overall. It's not like he dropped to the second round. He should have um, been on the Jets. Kind of concerned. But it might have worked out better for him, if we're being honest here. It did. Oh, yeah, it worked out way better. They, they got some offensive yeah. linemen in Chicago. But I think it was yeah. Matt Nagy going, hey – what can I do to save my job right now? Like right now. Oh yeah, yeah. So he, I think he realized, the Bears realize. Okay, we messed up and we missed out on Mahomes. Let's not mess up and miss out on. <laughs> a whole lot of people missed out on. No, Mahomes. no, 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 not <laughs> messed up and missed out on Mahomes. We messed up, got robbed, missed out on any other quarterback in the draft. Yeah. Oh yeah. lord. Yeah, yeah. But tell us how you really feel about it. Know, right. <laughs> Man. Tell us how you really feel. Passion. Finally, we get passion coming out of him. Yes. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm sorry. Those likes, those likes and shares. Likes and shares. Likes and shares. 
bunch of chairs. And Fruits and beans. The that they moved in order to slide up to select Mitchell Trubisky was a slap in the face. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. I'm not even a Bears fan. It was just like I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell. Listen, it, this has nothing to do with the NFL, but I'm gonna tell you a Mitchell Trubisky story. When North Carolina beat Florida State here in Tallahassee, they beat him on that field goal. Was that three years ago? Yeah. yeah. I was standing in the end zone. Can you see my computer first? I don't know if you can hear. Yeah, well, you're good. So I'm standing in I'm standing in the end zone, right? And I'm getting this game-winning field goal from North Carolina. Uh-huh. And all of a sudden, the whole entire team starts running in celebration, and I thought I yeah. was going to die. Thought I was going to die because all I see is this herd of like. 60 gigantic football players running full speed <laughs> and they're running down the field doing the chop and I'm just like yeah. oh my god this is how I'm gonna die right here in this end zone I, I'm so, under these uprights I'm, I'm so going to get trampled I'm so glad you did yeah me that. too but it was horrifying <laughs> oh my god so that's my story for the day. <laughs> but one last thing before we switch gears is uh J and JC predicted this Michael Parsons is in Dallas, and Leighton Vander Esch didn't get his fifth year option. So, it's are, you, are, you doing a little, are you doing a little of this? You know, it's it's just me. It's a Cowboys pick with Michael Parsons. I mean, it's still, still going to lose. Athletic, I mean, questions surrounding certain things going on in the background, right? It's just a Cowboys pick, unfortunately. And, but it's a great pick. Especially with the retirement of Sean Lee, right? Leighton Van Der Esch, fifth-year option, not picked up. There's a decision to make about him. And then Jalen Smith. And they went with a young guy. They went with a young guy. (laughs) Listen, Bill Walsh told a friend of mine who played for him, you can't make the team in the tub. So if if you're constantly on on IR or whatever they call it now, that means you're not on the field. So It's the truth. And, and you're gonna go with the young guy, especially a guy you spent a lot of money on. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, so no, now that we're into the NCAA, I don't know if y'all have been watching the FCS playoffs, but yes. it was it was good. James Madison and Sam Houston are gonna meet up. Sam Houston sent North Dakota State home. Um, I believe also uh, I'm trying to see. James Madison sent North Dakota home, so. There will be no North Dakota teams for the first time since 2010 participating in the Super Bowl. Who would ever think North Dakota was a football juggernaut? I just honestly, you'd be yeah. surprised. Well, eh? that's what well, that's what happens when you sit in FCS forever and you don't want to move up and uh, play in the exactly. FBS. But oh. that's a that's a whole other, that's a whole other that's a whole other issue She's for right. a whole other day. She's <laughs> right. She's absolutely <laughs> right. Like wow. they, they literally have like if you've noticed all the good teams in the South, like Georgia Southern, Appalachian State, Coastal when Coastal they Carolina was getting moved up. They all moved exactly they all moved up. North Dakota State, they want well, a little bit of it is North Dakota State recruits Florida, which is something like you would not expect. And they have sort of pretty good success. They got a dome. Yeah, yeah they do down. play indoors, which helps. Because <laughs> I, mean, I know there's one kid, North Dakota. Yeah. There's one kid whose brother we played with in high school, JC, uh, um, Christian Watson. His brother we played high school ball with. He is one of the star yeah. receivers for North Dakota State, and he's he went to Plant, I believe. So you know that's how that's how I can say you know they they recruit Florida pretty well, and oh, okay. it's it, the proof is in the pudding. But I think, you know, spring season. Oh, kind of pudding comes out of North Dakota. I mean, they're, they're, listen, they're, I'm not putting down on them. They're good for what, they're, they're good. They're, they're a great football team, obviously. Don't back up However, now. You said, you said it. No, you said it. You, no, I, I, and I'm, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, no, let, no, let don't, me don't back up. You, you threw they're crap in their Kool-Aid. Yes, you team. did. They're an, I, and I, can I, can I speak? Or you, you said they're excellent because they That's wouldn't awesome. move up. Go ahead. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. They're an excellent football team, but it gets to a point where you're, um, 
don't want to say a man against boys, but that's pretty much what it is. They're dominating. So do you just want to keep dominating against weaker competition? Or do you want to move up and actually be challenged and see how far, far you can go, how far you can take your program? Just want to let you know, it. It might this a, is not a compliment, but go ahead. It might be a money thing. And it's not a compliment. It might be a money thing. I, I mean, I don't know the inner workings of that athletic department. But could, to me, it's you just you're just out. continuing to dominate. I don't know. I just don't agree with it. But you can say the same thing about James Madison, too. James Madison hasn't had... I guess the dominating success, but James Madison is always a team too that's that that dominates yeah. the FCS playoffs. So James Madison has always been up in that conversation as well. So you could honestly say the same thing about James Madison too. No, no, you got she's, she's she's right. Right. Would, would you rather be the big fish in the little pond or the little fish who gets beat up by Alabama in the big pond? I kind of want to go to state in Alabama play, to be honest with you. I think what? someone said on game day they said Alabama would win by thirty as of now according to Vegas. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's not bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's not bad. <laughs> you look like you got a shot to come back. Alabama oh, yeah. not, not a total, not a total beatdown. Yeah, beat no, down. <laughs> they didn't. They didn't start everybody. Yeah, it's we got yeah, some I, Like you know, you can feel confident in that. Wow, only by thirty. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, those are those are your two semifinal games: James Madison against Sam Houston, and then Delaware against South Dakota State. But I, I almost I I I like South Dakota State for this reason, this reason only. There was a point in the game where uh, Southern South Illinois was driving, and North Dakota State or no South Dakota State held on the goal line, and then managed to drive 99 yards to take the lead. And that right there kind of just signified to me, like, okay, Delaware might be in trouble this weekend. And whoever Listen. they play, which should probably be James Madison, Listen. might be in trouble. Too. Is this the Delaware Blue Hens? Yes, this is the Delaware Blue Hens. The, the fighting Flacos? <laughs> oh, Lord. I knew something he was going to go there. <laughs> just, oh, Lord. Just, get the flack out of here, man. We're not. No, Bill. <laughs> Delaware, Delaware has had traditionally a decent team because people don't they don't practice against the wing T anymore. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It, do, do, do you I guys even know what the wing T is? Yeah, have you ever seen, did you ever have to there, listen? Some of our high school still, some of our high school still run it. So we still see it on Fridays. Sometimes. Oh my gosh! Oh, I know Madison County still runs it up there in Madison. A, a pop guy, I think, still running. Yeah, a little bit. Wow. Yep. It's it's fairly popular in some places, but I mean it's true. I watched I watched Delaware actually when they played against Delaware State. I don't even know why that's even a rivalry to be honest with you, but it hey, they look hey. like a complete team. Get off of Delaware, man. Just the whole Delaware thing. dominated them. I, I'm not knocking Delaware, I'm knocking Delaware State. I don't it's know Delaware. why this is a rivalry. I got Delaware relatives State. that went to Delaware State. Yeah. I don't I think do. he should be proud of that one. I'm not. That's why he's, that's why he's defending them. I'm trying to defend it, but I mean, I feel like Jay Peeps. I mean, they do get dominated, but I mean, at one point, Delaware State was a good school. Um, yeah, no, they, they these were. relatives are in their like 60s and 70s right now, so it's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah, I think their last MEAC championship was, I want to say, 06 or 07. Oh, that soon. But, okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it was because no, seriously, there was a point where like, Delaware State was like every like they were just like okay, like they're good, but I mean, I feel like we can beat them. I remember watching one game one night. Fam, you went up there, and I thought Fam, was going to force overtime, but you know, Delaware State just managed to hold on in the end, and then I think that was like closing closing the book on Delaware State. Okay. So, Allison, know, we're not hey. even involved in the conversation here. This is no. The, I just like listening to the argument. I just think it's funny. Like I'm, I'm enjoying the Delaware versus Delaware State. Who's better? Who's not good? Who's historically better? Like I'm really enjoying this. Well, not never, even an argument. Conversation, I guess. You'll you'll never see this conversation on game day. I tell you that much. No, <laughs> no, I I won't. But I'm I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Yeah, I mean to be honest with you, like I said, it's just it's it's good to it's good to see football. It's good to see championship football. Um, I think we've been 
don't know, a little bit spoiled this year uh, because we've had it kind of twice because in the fall and then in the spring, yeah. obviously, with a FCS. Um, so, again, it hasn't been full force by any means. Um, and you could maybe say that's why North Dakota State is not, not still alive because it has been a weird year. But by any means it's football and i mean it's it's fun to watch and it's high scoring and it's it's a little different different speed of football dang what is with you today with me goodness oh my this gosh what, what, what? <laughs> you said a weird year and just for some reason he popped into my head when he said it's been a weird year i mean it's it has oh my goodness but i'm gonna tell you I don't know. What? He was he was looking kind of attractive with your voice coming out of his mouth. I'm just just like you know just. It's gracious. I'm gonna oh. shut this laptop again. No, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, no. Wait. We'll shut him up. We'll shut him up. Whoa, Lord have mercy. I'm going. I'm going to go away. No. <laughs> well, I mean, the good thing is before before we transition, I guess we can kind of say, you know, who is somebody that y'all got an eye on going into the 2022 NFL draft? Y'all, y'all getting way too ahead of yourself. I was actually listening to ESPN Radio yesterday. I want to say it was, and they were trying to compare next year's stock of quarterbacks to this year's stock of quarterbacks. And when we see like another quarterback-heavy draft, I don't think it's going to be as dominating as quarterbacks. But Sam Howell yeah. is a guy that that's going to probably be taken high. Spencer Rattler is another guy you're going to have to to look at too. So I don't think it's going to be like one, two, three again. But I think if you missed out on a quarterback this year, you'll have an opportunity to get a quarterback next year if you want one. Yeah, I think it's going to be a more strong approach. Go ahead. All right, cool. I'm out of there. <laughs> hey, I think Akil Glass is is a, is a quarterback to watch. Unfortunately, I don't think he's going to get the same visibility in the fall that he got in the mm -hmm. spring. So his team yeah, is going to have to make some noise for him to get visible. I never mind. I was going to say something, but I'm gonna be quiet. This is hot time. No, this is fourth quarter. Very good point. Absolutely. It's hot time. But the fact that he's getting he's getting looked at now is very good because you know it can still stay in the social diet a little bit longer. You understand? Yeah. And then it's not as hard to break that first wall. Again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we are on the hot topic. So the interesting thing is, and I don't know how up to date y'all are with the Olympic news, but Olympic officials are determined to have, to have the Tokyo Olympics to fight Japan's growing doubts with Japan's health system and the a fatal flaw. And can, they don't can, overlook the system. Can I can I let you know I was in on that conversation? Like the actual My, conversation. I heard the conversation. The Olympic Committee. Yes, the IOC was on the phone with Japan and they were like, hey, we're having the Olympics there. And Japan was like, you know, like when you had that friend that wants to come over for dinner, but your mom doesn't like them, but you still want to be their friend because they're one of the cool kids. And they were like, well, you know, it's not really good over here. We're, we're coming. We're having the Olympics there. But, 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 but we, we really, we really don't know if it's safe to have it. We're coming. We're having the Olympics there. But not all of our stadiums have been secure. That we're having the Olympics. That was the conversation. That was really Honestly, the Honestly, he's got a point. That is kind of what it sounds like. How are you going to bully awful. somebody? And I'll tell, I'll tell you this. I got I to gotta find, find it real quick. Hold on. How are you going to bully and somebody and say, look, I'm, I'm, we're going to have this family dinner at your house. I live in a hotel. That's okay. That's okay. In the Olympics, right. At yeah. We'll meet in the Can lobby. You this meme? Can you see this meme? Oh my gosh. <laughs> fire? That's, yes. That's, yes. That's the Olympics. That is. It, it, oh, it, it is. really is. I mean, like, I, I'm, look, I'm all for getting back to sports here at home, but I'm just, I feel like we need to wait a little bit longer to get back to it internationally well, as well. Especially oh, when there's like no real concrete plan i feel they're not allowing international visitors in so it's going to be all japanese spectators which i think is super weird um it's just it's it's just odd like, yeah yeah i agree with you allison <laughs> yeah. i just i just i have a feeling it's just gonna not be good and it's 
something's gonna happen. I just, I don't know. I just, hopefully I'm wrong and it goes off smooth without a hitch, but they're just having so many issues over there and I just feel like it's, it's but not Miss, concrete and they're just arguing with each other and I just, Miss, it's just Miss not gonna Allison, end well. Miss Allison, we can pack everybody in the Tokyo Dome. We'll be okay. Yeah, and it's not gonna end well. <laughs> It's really not. Yeah, it's not gonna end well. It, it, it's too rushed. It's probably too soon. Come on, guys! It's not like the Olympics are gonna be this year. Mm. Oh wait a minute, they are. Mm. Never mind. Yeah. As you yeah. were. It's not. It's not. But yeah, it's not good. It's not good. I mean, we'll see how it goes. But like I said, I hope I'm wrong, and I hope it goes off without a hitch. But I just see it. I just see it as a disaster. <laughs> Yeah. But we'll see. Final sale. I'm I'm with her. I'm like yeah. it's just like I said. I'm 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 excited because we get to see the U.S. women's gymnastic team and uh, yeah. swimming. Yeah. But which honestly, I'm really looking forward to seeing those two primarily outside of U.S. Yeah. men's basketball, Olympic wrestling. Yes, boxing. I'm there for that. Boxing. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, by the way, while we're in hot topics, Allison, did you know that this... Oh go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say about the Olympics too, just because my sport is softball. It was making a twenty twenty Olympics, so now we get to see that we get to see that too. I mean it's been a minute since we've seen softball in the Olympics. You're right. So I'm I am excited to watch my sport compete again. So that's what I again, I hope <laughs> I hope they do get to compete, and I hope that everybody gets to compete. But personally, I mean, the Olympics are so much fun, anyways. It's just it's the highlight every four years. Um, I just I don't know. Again, I wish I had the meme still up on my phone, but dumpster fire. I'm gonna get that meme. But anyways, what were you gonna show. ask me? No, I was gonna say, it's did fantastic you speaking, meme. speaking of uh, Olympic of the Olympics and boxing? Did you know JC has a has a challenge coming up with? Yes. Uh, Yes, with Jake Paul. He issued a challenge to Jake Paul. <laughs> oh, jeez, Louise! <laughs> can you wear in the in the weigh-ins? Can you like rip your shirt like you did for this yes. promo? Because that would be epic. Dad, you gotta wear the headband. You gotta yes. be all out. Yes, I got you. You gotta be all out. You, you like how he did it three times yeah. in slow motion? Yeah, I did. It was it was really epic. Um, oh can, can, I, can I bring up a topic? For, can I bring up a topic for this hot topic because we didn't get to talk about it? And you know, I got it. You know, I want to talk about it. Go right Jordan ahead. Can we talk about? Can we talk about Tim Tebow getting a tryout with yes. Jacksonville oh, Jaguars? God. Because we didn't get we didn't get to talk about this, and and yeah. and, and we need to talk about this. I want to I want to know your take of this. Yeah, I want to hear. What okay, you first know. first first of all, first of all. I made a joke when Urban got hired that he was going to bring Tebow on as quarterback because they're they're besties, okay? Yeah. They they just always had that relationship. He I mean they had Urban I don't want to say worship, but he thought very highly of him when he was at Florida. I mean it was very well known. <laughs> He's continued to talk about him. So I made a joke, like, oh, wouldn't that be really funny if he brought him on as quarterback? So yeah. when I saw this, when I saw that he was getting a tryout, I about fell on the floor because I was like, it's happening. Not at quarterback, but it's happening. And I talked about how I feel about Tim Tebow before. Like, I don't think he was given a fair shake in the NFL as a quarterback. I've made that very clear. I think if he would have been a coaching staff that believed in him, I feel like he could have done better in the NFL. But I will say this. Tight end is what every single person told him he needed to switch to. And yes. he's doing it. Do I think it might be a little too late? Probably, but but it's Jacksonville. Nobody else. I is just there. thought it was hilarious. No, no, I, no. And, but no, I think it's hilarious right. that this is going to be that this is going to be his opportunity to make it in the NFL with with Urban Meyer in his home city, though, which is awesome. Like, if there's ever a chance to do it, this is it. It's with your college coach. It's with a position that that he should have switched to a long time ago if he wasn't stubborn. And it's with his hometown team. I am all for it, and I, I just I hope it happens. I think it's cool. I was I was about to say now. You you said he's going to finally get a chance to to star in the NFL. I was he could have gotten that chance previously. 
but he was super yes. stubborn, wanted to play quarterback. Yes, he would. Yeah. And I agree with you there. It was. It was his. Bar. I agree with you. That's what kept me out of the NFL. Yeah, it was. I wanted to no, play quarterback. I, but, but saying that, but saying that, I do think he could have been successful at quarterback had he been given a too. fair shake. When he a was. Team that he was in successful him. in Denver. I You're right, because he was successful in Denver. Yes, he led them to a playoff win right. in Denver, but that he just ne- it never vibed with management and with it just didn't work. Now, I wish he could have succeeded at quarterback, but if he can succeed at tight end, I'm all for it because he's a he's a yeah. I mean he's a great human being. Yeah. Everybody knows that. There's no secret. But just how cool of a story would that be? And it's for Jacksonville with his college coach, hometown team. You're getting the second shot at what 33 years old. I hope he crushes yeah. it. I hope he does it. I think it's so cool. And and, and see the thing is too, that's gonna sell tickets in Jacksonville. Uh, ding 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 ding. Freaking lootly. Absolutely. That's why T-Bow. I remember there was this big there was this huge push to bring Tebow to Jacksonville before. One to draft him. And then when he left Denver and then left the Jets, there was this huge push to bring him to Jacksonville because whether he succeeded or not. It was going to post seats. So if you can bring him there, and one, the hype's already high because of Trevor, but then you have Timmy Tebow, who's the hometown king. I mean, the guy could run for mayor in Jacksonville and win a landslide. Bring him there, sell tickets, get butts in seats. Everybody wins. Most definitely. Most definitely. Everybody wins. Yes. I had to say my two cents. I, I, I I saw that on the topic sheet this week, and I was like, Let's no, do it. I'm all for talking word. about this. Tim Tebow, too little, too late, and uh, hasn't wow. played in the NFL here. for years. Get all right, out cool. Here. Uh, Get out of here. Anyway. Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, so I'm excited for it. We we gonna we're gonna get a good look at it in preseason because I know Urban's gonna try to mesh it all together in preseason. Before, before we get too far out of out of uh bounds here, because I see us going down a road and then forgetting how to get back. Thank you very much, yeah. Allison, for joining us. How can we follow you on social media? Allison Posey 14. It's at A L I S O N Posey P O S E Y one four Twitter, Instagram, all that. Give me a follow, give me a like. Um, and then I'll, I'll be back in a month. Okay, so we got rid of the OnlyFans. All right, cool. Um, hey, that was me, bro. Oh, that was you. Oh, I'm sorry. Wrong at wrong, Allison. Yeah. I'm sorry. That was his name on OnlyFans. Yeah, OnlyFans. Yeah. Sorry about that. Gotta make oh. the money somehow. Hey, when you right? ripped that shirt the other day, I know you had some people logging in. I ain't, you know. Hey! Same. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't going to say I actually ate today, but I actually ate today. <laughs> <laughs> so, quick question. Um, never mind. It's time for them to close the show out. I wanted to know if you thought J Peeps had teeth whitening or if they were natural. Because yours are very that. white. His are glowing, oh, Allison. Lord. His Thank are glowing. Thank you for joining us, guys. I'm uh, always don't natural. Don't to follow us on all our platforms. I'm... Ooh. What's going on? Oh, what's up? Sorry for the, uh, the, the bit of lateness. There's been some technical difficulties, but we are beyond that now. Uh, yes, sir. I'm JC. I'm J Peeps. Welcome and to another episode of the podcast. Wonderful episode for you today. Um, lots of an stuff amazing to talk about. An amazing episode. Lots of stuff to talk about in the NFL, 